Hello everyone, I'm Arunima from Knitter Notter and in this video I'm going to show you how to make these pinwheel squares using Tunisian crochet. I'm going to cover the basic construction of these squares. Uh, so all these squares are made exactly the same way. The only difference is when we change color. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to make one square completely and I'm going to show you how to make each of these patterns and this is just a repeat uh, so if you see one of these squares so, uh, so if you look at this section here this small square on this side this is just a repeat pattern on all four sides uh, and uh, so if you look at all of these it's, it's exactly the same so if you so this one shows it best so this this pattern is repeated four times so that's one two three four the same thing is going on in all of these squares so if you know how to make one corner one square then you can just repeat that same pattern and make any of these designs and i'm going to cover all four of them in this video uh, there are a few things i want to point out so the first is i've made these squares using um, 10 stitches so i start with so there is a there is a center chain um, so or a circle this gray row is the first one where i um, where i created the foundation row for instance so if i started from here i start with 10 stitches and then i decrease all the way on this side and this one is anchored over here so this is the center so if i have 10 stitches in my foundation then there's nine stitches on this side and nine stitches on this side so i actually i do not have 20 but i have a total of 19 stitches on one um in one uh so say this triangle on this side and so every one of these is 19 so that's one one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's the center. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So there's nineteen stitches um, on, or nineteen rows on each, uh, on each edge, on each side, and. Uh, this is uh, i'm going to start with this pattern because i feel like it's the easiest uh, in terms of seeing how to make these stitches uh, so if i'm going to make this with simple stitches tunisian simple stitches and i'm also going to show you how to carry yarn in the back so if you look at this you can see this nice neat little line in the back where the yarn is carried so i'm going to show you how to do that as well so this is all that we're going to cover in this video so let's get started so for this video i'm going to use uh, lily sugar and cream yarn in two colors so these two colors you need two contrasting colors to uh, see a good effect you can choose whichever two colors you like but for this video i'm going to use these two colors and i'm going to start with this one and uh, the one thing that i forgot to mention earlier is that uh, we have to you also need to know how to change color at the beginning of forward pass for this uh, so if you look at the square, uh, I've changed color at the beginning of the forward pass in every row. So uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to start with this one. So I'm going to make one corner of this and then one corner of the other three squares. So let's start. So to begin, you need to make four chains. So that's one, two, three, four and then join with a slip stitch and this is the center where you will anchor all your um, stitches from the square and i think it's a good idea to put a stitch marker here in case you can't figure out where your center ring is so here this is i'm just going to put a stitch marker here so i can see where this is in case i lose it and now you can make this with any number of stitches you'd like and the pattern will remain exactly the same but for this tutorial i'm going to make it with 10 so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten and i'm going to make my foundation row i usually make it in the back bumps but in this technique it doesn't really matter so i'm just going to do the easy one i'm making the foundation row in the top bar here so 
that should be 10 stitches that's 2 4 6 8 10 and we will make one we will join with this center loop yarn over and pull through so that leaves us with 11 loops on the hook at the beginning of the forward pass so if you're using 10 stitches then you'll have 11 loops on the hook at the end of the forward pass for the foundation row so then yarn over pull through two all the way to the beginning of this row And I'm not going to complete this because I'm going to change color. I, I, this is the this is the block I'm going to start with, and it, you'll see why I said that it was it is easy to explain how to do this with this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach this yarn. And if this is distracting if color changing is distracting you can uh, move forward in the video and find the section where I'm making uh, this one or even this one and there will be no color changes in that section so if that's easier for you and that's more comfortable you can uh, jump to those sections so here for the next row I'm going to make a simple stitch in each of these foundation row stitches And I will not make a stitch in the center loop. So at the end of the forward pass here, I will have 10 loops on my hook. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 10 loops on my hook. I'm going to make my return pass. I will not chain one. I will just yarn over and pull through two all the way. And then over here, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the other color and complete this. So I'm going to change color at every row and I'm going to reduce the size, uh, the number of stitches in each row by one on every row. So I started with 11 loops on the hook. In this, I had 10 and I'm going to have nine now. So just make simple stitches in all of these stitches from the previous row except for that last slanted stitch I'll show you just a second so this one is that decrease from the previous row so we'll not make a stitch in this last slanted one we'll just make one here in this vertical bar and that's two four six eight nine and yarn over pull through two and that that sort of creates a return pass decrease And this one will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then yarn over, pull through two. And change color. So this section I feel is the easier one. You just have to decrease. The next one is where it gets a little tricky. Let's change color.
So here I, I made this until I have two loops on my hook. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows, and this is the tenth one. So if you remember from here, I talked about this a little bit in the beginning. So this is one, this is the center row. That's that's the one, that's the foundation over here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is the tenth one. And now for the next Now for the next section, we'll build this on this side. So we'll rotate our work 90 degrees and then we'll start working in this direction. So I'm going to rotate my work 90 degrees and I'm going to now not change color over here because I end with this color and then I'm going to start with this color in the next row. So I'm going to complete this row. That's the 10th row for this side. And now I'm going to rotate my work. So I've already rotated it. So this is how it was. And I'm going to rotate my work 90 degrees. And this is, I'm going to construct the rest of it in this direction. So now to do this, I'm going to match colors for uh, for each row. And that's, that's where the easy part comes, I think, to understand how to make this. Um, so I've got, I have to make my first row of this side so what i'm going to do is i have this loop on the hook that's the first one and then there's this horizontal bar from the previous uh, row that i'm going to pick up and yarn over pull through and that's my first row for this side this edge so now i'm going to change color because the next one is going to be this is going to match so this row matches this one. It's slightly difficult to see, but the next row has to match this one. So for the next row, I'm going to pick up this vertical bar. Now this is a vertical bar. And then I'm going to pick up this horizontal bar from the same color over here. So that's three loops on the hook. And then yarn over pull through and yarn yarn over pull through but with a different color that's because i'm going to now make the next row with this color i'm going to pick up i'm going to join with this row here which is of the same color so if you see in this here matching rows of the same color so they all join with the same color so here i'm going to so one more thing I want to point out here is that some people um, put stitch markers in their stitches over here to make it easier for them to see. So as you're making your rows, you can put a stitch marker in this last, uh, that slanted stitch. So it you don't really have to find it as you're working this side. Uh, that is helpful for some people and the other thing that I found helpful which I've um, used in my swatch in my square for the blanket cal is that instead of only picking this one in the front I picked up both the front and the back sort of like we pick up two vertical bars to make an edge stitch um, and that was because my uh, join was very very loose I guess that was because of the kind of yarn I was using um, so that that worked out well as well so if you're if this doesn't feel right by just picking up one it is completely fine to pick up these two uh, bars to make that join there so for this row I'm going to make a simple stitch and then another simple stitch in here in that join from the previous row and then pick up that work that horizontal bar here and join so with every row you're going to add one loop on the hook and yarn over pull through the next row will be the same just make simple stitches in all simple stitches make a simple stitch in that join and then pick up join with the same color by picking that slanted stitch there and that's all that you need to do just need to keep changing color with every row and 
you'll see the pattern that we're going for. Here we have two, four, six, eight, ten loops on our hook, and this is where it gets interesting. So I'm going to now entangle my yarn just because I've been crossing it at the back. And I'm going to yarn over, pull through two. This is going to be the exact same as the previous rows. And I'm going to change color here. And this next row that I'm going to make, so this is nine rows. If you count, it's you can count the number of uh, loops on the side. It's easy with this, the color changes here. It's so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if you remember, I said that there is the center row and there's equal number of stitches or rows on, equal number of rows on both sides. And so this is, this is 10 and this is 10. The 10th is this for both of them. So there's a total of 19 stitches. So this, the center row counts as the, uh, as a part of this triangle here and this triangle here, both. So for the next, this, this center row will be anchored in this loop here. So I'm going to go ahead and do what I was doing earlier by making simple stitches in each. So that should be 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, and that join here, 10. 10 loops on the hook and then anchor here. And that's 11. And yarn over, pull through to all the way to the beginning. I'm going to go all the way in this because I'm not going to color uh, change color at this point. So if you see, if you continue making this on the side, you will just, it's almost like you're starting here again. So you're going in around, but you're making these squares instead of circles. And so this, if you keep going, making, uh, changing color every row, this is what you will end up with. Now, for the next one, I'm going to make this, which is, um, there's five rows of this one color, and then I start changing color. I'm going to show you how I did that. And there's also this, 
yarn that's carried in the back so i'm going to show you how to do that as well so this will be because this is the center this will be counted as the first row and then this is the second row where it's the exact same as what we did over here where we make simple stitches in each stitch and we'll not count the anchor stitch here so this is there should be 10 loops 2 4 6 8 10 and then yarn over pull through 2 yarn over pull through 2 all the way to the beginning and I forgot to carry my yarn so let's do this again to carry my yarn I'm just going to hold this on the side and pull this yarn just make sure whichever direction you're doing it in it should be the same always so this is sort of interlocking it I moved that on the other side and then I'm going to pick up this yarn again and here I'm going to make my 10 simple stitches so that's four five six seven eight nine ten I always count that first one as a stitch so there's two four six eight ten loops on the hook and then yarn over pull through two all the way to the beginning and then for the next row again I'm going to move this yarn to this side pick this one bring it up at top and pull this one from the other side so this sort of interlocks this at the back and make my simple stitches this time it will be uh, I believe nine loops on the hook one two three four five six seven eight and nine and yarn over pull through two So that completes the third row for this triangle on this side. I'm going to make a total of five rows in this color. And I tug on this carried yarn at the back just a little bit so it doesn't, um, it's not too loose at the back. So this is one two three four rows in that color and then I'm going to interlock these again and this is the fifth row so I'm not going to complete this I'm going to change color at this point to make to make this pattern so here after making five rows if you see uh, this one is the center so that's one two three four five rows of the same color and then we change color so I'm going to pick up this other color again I like to always move this yarn to the other side and then pick it up from this side pick the other one from this side so here you can see that this is nicely interlocked at the back and I'm going to so the pattern is exactly the same it is you just have to keep decreasing this is a reverse pass decrease and uh, it's just a matter of changing color at different in different ways so you get these different patterns and if you see I always pick up my yarn to work with from the same side so I move the working yarn on the other side and I pick it up from this side the new one from this side that that makes it uh, nice and neat in the back I'll show you in a moment so I'm changing color at every row the beginning of every row Oops. and at this point I'm, I keep uh, twisting my yarn because I'm into I'm locking those threads so I have to untangle them after every few rows so you might want to do that and change color and 
this is the fifth one and I'm going to stop here so this is five rows of one color and then five rows with alternating colors so this section now is very similar to this one that we already made here where you just you're going to make the first row of that next side uh, after you turn this 90 degrees with that same color to match the rows on that side may match the color rows on that side so you just turn it 90 degrees that that completes that row that is the 10th row of that previous section and then now we're starting on this side and we just pick up that uh, horizontal bar with the same color and now I'm going to change color because I want to the, for the next row I want to match this one so I pick up that join and then I pick up this slanting stitch from that same color and the yarn over pull through two and I'm going to change color now So it's easy to see where to change color with this because uh, you're just matching the rows on the other side other section that you just made the perpendicular one so here this one and the next one will be the last color change for this section because I'm done with the yellow and so this is the i think this is the sixth row this is one it started with the yellow one two three four five six this is the sixth row and uh, i'm going to now not change color because as you see i just have to match color on this side and i'm done with changing colors here so i'm going to now make rows with this same color and you'll see now that there is no color change it's slightly more tricky to find that next stitch to join with so here this is the row that we ended with this is the join from the previous row and you have to find the next the row next to that and then find that slanted stitch in that row because it's the same color I always find it slightly hard I have to stop and look where I need to insert my hook just to make sure that I am doing it right it's easy to insert your hook in the wrong stitch. I've done it multiple times, so just be careful when you do this. And that's the reason I chose the color changing section first to show you so you understand the pattern. And then uh, with a little practice, you'll know where to insert your hook. Now see here, we've picked up this join from the previous row and you have to now find the next row, which is this one, and then that slanted stitch from this row. So I'm going to make a total of five. So this is three. This is four. And the next one will be five. So that's two, three, four, five. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is the 10th one here in that join. And because this is that center row, you'll be able to see that this is matching the other side with this one. If you lay it flat, then this row matches this one. So this needs to be anchored in that uh, center loop. So that's 11 loops on your hook. And then yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the beginning. So that completes this. So there's two squares. Uh, this is the first one. And this is this section right here. And here's this one, which is this section right here. So if you make continue making these with counting this as the first row for that next side, if you turn like this, you come to this one as the first row for the next side. Um, that that next square and if you continue making this pattern with uh, this is the first one and then four more rows in the solid color and then change color every row uh, you will and if you keep going if you make all four uh, smaller squares with that same pattern you will end up with this so it's very easy to create patterns with this because you just need to figure out this sort of one corner and the rest of it just matches Okay, so I just realized that I didn't carry this yarn at the back, which is uh, okay. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to bother um, unraveling this and doing it again. But let me just show you how it looks at the back right now. So you can see that uh, because I was crossing the yarn, it. it there's a nice little um, woven finish at the back for the carried yarn and here I have this yellow yarn being carried to the back and I would have carried this over but for now I'm not going to but this is where it would have been uh, so for the next one I'm going to I'm going to make this where both the sections of this triangle are uh, the same color so I'm going to just continue working with this orange yarn and uh, I am okay with not carrying yarn in the back but if you wanted to use this uh, on the other side, which I will at some point, I'd either, uh, I'd, I'd most likely carry this yarn in the back, but at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it and I'm going to reattach on the other side. So for, for making this, I'm just going to continue uh, working over here. So I'm going to consider this as my first row for that section. Uh, Again, I'm repeating this over and over again because um, it took me a while to understand this, but this row is a part of this section. That is the 10th row in this section and it is the first row in the other section. So it counts towards both sections. So uh, for the first part, I this is the easy part where you just have to do the decreases. So I'm going to go ahead and do it because this is all in one color. I don't have to worry about uh, changing color so it has to uh, I have to have 10 loops on my hook so that's two four six eight nine so I'm missing one here's the tenth one and then yarn over pull through two and keep doing this I'm going to keep doing this until I have those uh, I end up with two loops on the hook on uh, a single row
and here I have two loops on the hook at this point and this is so if you count from here this is row 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and this is the tenth one so this is the last one on this side and I'm going to complete this and I'm going to turn my work 90 degrees and you see if I just start with this I, I feel a little intimidated even now um, just to make sure that I have all my stitches right is a little difficult so I take it slow and um, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here so here I've rotated um, 90 degrees and this is the first loop on my hook so I'm going to pick up this one here that's the horizontal bar and yarn over pull through two so that's row one for this side and for the next rows I'm going to just I'm going to first pick up the, the, the one where I joined and I'm going to find the uh, slanted bar here on the next row yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through two all the way to the beginning I'm going to do that for every row and uh, I have to do that until I have 10 loops on my hook at the end of the forward pass here that's three and so this is this current row this is the next row and this is that slant in the next row so here I have rows one two three so it might be useful to mark that first row here with a stretch marker uh, I just it's it's hard for me to see where I started and where I ended so I just put a stitch marker there so that marks that first row so this is the third row now I'm on my fourth so this three and then this is that join and then find that next row this is the next row and then there's that slanted stitch and then the next one same thing So nine and this is ten here it always helps to count because it's hard to see where the stitches are and how many you need to make especially with those anchor rows it's it gets difficult to figure out where you are so this is ten loops on the hook so that completes this section and the next row that I'll make I'll have to anchor it at the center so if you uh, so you'd actually you'd anchor four rows to the center so this is the first one this is the second one here's the third and there's one more that I'm going to make here so for the next section I'm going to do this and I'm going to actually start with the yellow color and that's why I didn't uh, I didn't make that anchor row quite right now because I just wanted to show you how it is um, in a different color again so I'm going to now cut this yarn and attach here again I would uh, have carried this in the back but uh, I'm okay with it uh, with cutting it for this tutorial 
So here, and I'm going to now make simple stitches. So that's two, four, six, eight, nine. And you have to pick up the tenth one in that from that, that join from the previous row. Don't forget that. And then anchor it with that center. So if you can't find it, that is where the stitch marker helps. There is that loop and there. So here is that anchored center row. And if you count the number of rows here, that's this is the first one. See, it's easy to see which one where we started, otherwise it'd be hard to figure out. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is the tenth one. So this counts as a part of both this section and that section. So for the next section, I'm going to start with, I'm going to make this side with this color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry the yarn again so that you can see how that happens one more time. So move it to the side and pick that up here. Should be ten loops on the hook, two, four, six, eight, ten. I'm going to remove the stitch marker now. I don't need it anymore. Oops, I again forgot to carry that yarn. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it here. So you move that to the side, the working yarn, bring the one that we need to carry on the other side and move it to the same side and then pick this one from again from the bottom so here it's interlocked here I keep forgetting to do this I've had to frog my so many rows of my uh, of the samples that I've made before that I just I don't know how to fix it I don't know how to keep myself from forgetting but uh, for this tutorial I'm not going to frog but I'm just going to pick up from where I've where I remember. Uh, so the only purpose of carrying this yarn at the back is so you, well, that's two. You don't have to cut the yarn and join again, so there's less ends to weave in, and it gives a uniform look at the back. So if you are, if you'd like a uniform look in your at the back of your project, so that's that's useful. That that makes a very very nice looking uh, reverse side of your wrong side of your project. So the reason I'm carrying this here is because I'm going to make the next section. So this section is the side and then the next one is going to be here. That is going to be with the other color. So the other drawback, the one drawback of this uh, carrying yarn like this is that you keep uh, interlocking with the other color and then your yarn gets Sort of tangled so you have to make sure that you are twisting your project or the skeins uh, for um, to untangle them after once once and every after every few rows 
and at this point I'm going to now change color this is this is different from anything that we've done before in this square because we have to make the other side with this color so once I do this this makes the first stitch of the other side so this is how it is so this is so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten rows on this side of the yellow and then I just wanted to show you because this is different from what we've done before so here yellow is done so I'm not going to carry it in the back if you wanted to you could do it um, but for the purpose of this tutorial I'm not going to I, I keep forgetting and I just it's a lot of work for me to remember it so to make that first row I'm going to find that first horizontal bar and here over pull through two and then this is the same as what we've been doing before as I said the pattern is exactly the same you have to do your increases and your decreases so de decreases in this section and the increases in the one that we're making right now and you just have to do it four times over so you get a square but that's that's all there is to it you just change color differently uh, to get all these different patterns here that's four and then find that next row and there that color that slanted stitch So I think you could make this with different other stitches too. I've not tried it, but it would be an interesting experiment. Uh, I might do it at some point, but uh, alternating sections of different stitches might be nice. Or just doing the entire square in a different stitch might be nice. So that's there's a lot of possibilities with this square. So let's count the number of rows here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is where we need to stop because if you remember, uh, we start. So we've reached the starting point again here, and that tenth row will be this first foundation row that we've made. So the only part that's remaining now is to join this with that foundation row to close the square. So this is how it's looking right now from the front. There's a lot of loose yarn. Um, and this is how it's looking at the back if you want to see if you carry yarn all the way then you don't have a lot of these ends to deal with you just have four two in the beginning two in the end but that's how it is and i'm quickly going to show you how to close this so at this point i'm going to cut the yarn i'm going to pull this through I'm going to pick this color you could pick any color actually for for this one it will work out best because it's this both of the both the foundation row in this side and this color are the same but if they're of the of a different color then that it works either it, it doesn't matter which color you're picking because this yarn will be hidden mostly and you'll see how so here i'm going to do an invisible join on this side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to insert my hook and from this side front to back and pick up these two vertical bars or horizontal bars in this case and pull through and then I'm going to insert my hook in the top one from front, front to back here and I'm going to pull tight so that 
thing that I just make should be invisible because we don't want to add a stitch there. Uh, it looks awkward. I've tried it. I think it's one in one of my um, squares here. It. Uh, I thought I could just leave another leave one stitch there. If I could just leave it like this, it's a nice join, but it adds that extra loop here, which doesn't look nice. So just close it tight, and then I like to make a knot here to make sure it be doesn't become loose. So there, that's joined properly and you can see that sort of flows well. And now what you've got to do is if you see with every row, it starts from this side and ends on the on that side. Every stitch starts on this one side and ends on the other side. So we're going to mimic that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my hook on this side. So this is supposed to go in above that foundation row chain here above the foundation row chain right next to that vertical bar and then I'm going to find the first stitch after that edge stitch insert my hook like this and then insert the hook back the same place where I had inserted it earlier and just pull really tight so that this stitch comes back, this thread comes back and just sort of pulls that uh, simple stitch really tight and you can see that sort of now flows. It's almost like they were made on top of each other. So I'm going to do that again for all of these. So that was the second stitch and the third one. Just make sure that you're making this above that foundation row, uh, foundation chain don't want to split the yarn anywhere just over there and then insert your hook pick up this simple stitch and insert the hook back where you inserted it in the beginning and pull really tight and just keep doing this for the entire row so that was the third one this is the fourth if you do this right it'll uh, after you've completed it it will be very hard to see where your join was like in some of my squares it's very hard to see where I joined and you don't always get it a hundred percent right but it's it's very very close so this one see it's not a hundred percent right but I'm just going to let it be I I don't mind that That's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, this is the eighth one. Just make sure that when you pull this yarn tight, you're not pulling it from here because it can pinch a little. And this is the last one. You don't, this is the 10th one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth one, I'm sorry. Ninth one here. And we'll not do the 10th one actually. We'll just leave it at this. So that's how it is looking. So you can see that it's unless you look very closely it's hard to see where that is and I've not done it really well but if you if you see that these are not lining up like this one isn't lining up you just um, undo it and do it again so here I'm going to remove the stitch marker at this point I just weave in these ends and this is how it's this is how it's looking so this is all four of these so we started with this that matches here then we made this one that matches this side and then we made this one that matches this side and then we made this last one 
which matches here at the side. So every square that I've made like this uh, benefits from some blocking. This fit, sits fairly straight, but a little blocking will will make a huge difference. So this is pretty much all there is to make this square. Um, you can make different patterns with it. You can col change color um, in different ways and uh, you can create some very, very interesting squares with it. So if you like this uh, tutorial, please like and subscribe to my channel. I have a bunch of other tutorials and uh, free patterns on my blog too, which uh, you're also welcome to look at. I'm going to add links to all the stitches and techniques used in this tutorial in the description below and you'll also find a link to my blog there. So leave me a comment if you have uh, anything to share or if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. See you in my other videos. Bye-bye.